Hello there, I'm Nigel Griffiths, who work in IBM Power Systems Advanced Technology Support in Europe. This video is about a new Power 9 server, the E950. This is a first live look around the machine. Quick reminder of some of the facts about this new exciting server. It's a mid-range machine. For you high, loads and loads of processor capacity, a 42% jump since the last generation. The memory, 16 terabytes, four times the memory size of the previous generation. Loads of internal disks and SSDs and SAS. And then there's NVMe for very fast booting up of your operating systems or virtual I.O. servers. Lots of other disk options too. Lots of Gen 4 adapters go in the back. There's an extra Gen 3 as well on top of that. Four power supplies. Half of these could fall out and we carry on running. And we have built-in PowerVM, PowerVC. Now if you want more facts about all this sort of stuff, then look at the other video I have, Fast Facts for the E950. Now it may come as no surprise to you that taking videos of a black machine in a black rack in a dark room is problematic. So some of the videos are of the machine in the rack, but a lot of them are on a table with much better lighting so you can see the details. So here we are in the computer room in London. Mike's going to take the front cover off the E950. There he goes. Four distinctive big fans on the front of the machine. Here we are on the computer room desk. These black units are dummy memory risers because we don't have a full complement memory. At the back we have dummy processor baffles to improve the airflow. The bronze things at the back there are the two Power 9 heat sinks. The long blue units there are the memory risers and yellow stickers at the front for weight warning. Now we've got a view into the uh, CPU bay. At the far end we have the two real CPUs and heat sinks. Closer to us we have the, the dummies. Mike's going to pull one of these out. We're going to see into the where the socket is below. Customers will be able to upgrade the machines from two sockets to four in the future, probably fourth quarter 2018. You can do it yourself or you can hire an IBM CE to do it for you. Now have a quick look at the memory. There are eight riser cards. Mike's pulling one of them out in here. We've only got two because we have limited memory in this early machine. Underneath the aluminium heat sinks there are the level 4 cache controllers for memory. This allows the CPU to talk full speed to the cache controller and it deals with the memory. And we have 16 DDR4 DIMMs plugged into this. A total then of 128 go into a machine to get you up to the full 16 terabytes. Looking at the dummy risers, we don't have two of the uh, CP processors, so we have to have dummy memory in here. This is just to allow the airflow through the machine. We've got to be careful with this much memory in a small machine. Next, Mike's going to pull out some of the VRMs, these slimmer blue handle units. These are voltage regulator modules. There's three different sorts of them here for the memory, the I.O. and the CPUs. Their function is to make sure that these more expensive components of the machine get exactly the right voltage to uh, run them. And that protects them from uh, problems. And I'm told that these units will commit suicide rather than let a spike get through to the more expensive components. It's easier to replace one of these than a whole bank of memory or the CPUs themselves. Here we are around the back. We can pull out the power supply. The top two go to one PDU and the bottom two go to the other PDU. Nice big connector in there. That's why it takes a bit of a pull to pull it out and it goes in with a nice big clunk. On the left hand side there's two USB and then the service processor. We can see uh, the battery sticking out at the top. Mike's now taking out one of the blind swap cassettes with an adapter in it. Push down the blue release mechanism and pull it out. It takes us about 20 seconds to put a different adapter in and then uh, this little second or two to put it back into the server. Here we are around the front of the machine with the cover off. On the bottom right Mike's just showing you this is a little pop down handle to pull it out of the rack. Two USB connectors, slightly higher voltage in here, good for DVDs if you really must. Here's the other one, this handle actually has the machine type model and the serial number. Have the usual AEDs and the navigation buttons and the master power on and off and the indicators over here. I'm going to point out the eight disk drives, one, two, three, four and five, then at the bottom eight, seven and six. Then we're going to point out the NVMEs. They look like disks, they are SSDs, but they're directly connected to the PCIe ports. These are the four fans, very strong and powerful fans. There's two fans in each bay. You press it left and then you pull the arm around and out they pop. Very strong metal box. 
they're very loud and very powerful. Um, when you first start up the machine, they go at full speed. They really grab your hand and tuck it up against the grill. If you find the fan are fold-down shutters that stops the air escaping out the front while you're replacing a fan. Finally, around the front, we're going to remove a disc. Mike presses a little blue triangle. The handle pops out and you can slide it out. There it is. I'm going to take out an NVMe drive, similar thing, press the blue triangle, out pops the handle and you can slide it out. Now we're going to have a race on who can get it in the quickest. Is it me? Is it Mike? Is it me? Is it Mike? No, it's Mike wins and there's the NVMe in. Around the side of the machine we have these nail heads which mount onto the rails that let us slide into the rack. And above that we have the mounting points for the very nice comfortable handles, put them in a bit lower, pull them up and they lock on nice and firm, ready for lifting. Then we have number two and then we have number three. We'll turn the camera around and let you have a quick look at that. Next we're going to put the rail up against it and we'll show how that matches the slots in the rail. These are the uh, slots where the nail heads slide into when the rail is in the rack of course. You put the nail head in that's closest to the rack first and then lower the front of the machine to get them all to fit very nicely. And Mike's going to pull out the rail. You can see how the machine, if it was on the rail, would slide out the front. A few tips about mounting the rail. You can see a big L here for the left-hand side, of course. You get these like screw heads sticking through a hole and then you have a bolt going through this hook. The hook uh, locks the machine in when it slides in. A few little tips about putting the lid back on the machine. That nodule has to slide into this little angle area in the chassis. So at 30 degrees roughly, um, that's it. there we go, it's going to slide in now. You push the, it down to crush the little rubber strip slightly, a nice airtight steel, and then we're going to pop down the handles to lock it down. So the machine's back in the rack now. On the left here we have the server's processor, two cables to the HMCs. Over here there's five adapter slots and over this side six adapter slots with the power supplies in the middle. You can see the cables being tied to the cable management bracket at the top. So here's a remote I.O. draw adapter. We can quickly pull that out. I know it's not in use as we only have two CPUs. These four adapter slots aren't active. Now we'll push that back in and click it in home. A little bit different from other machines, if you have SAS discs in the front, then the cables from those bays come down this tunnel. They plug into two SAS adapters in C12 and C9. This is the blue, blue tag you pull to release the cable. There's three other ports per adapter, which you can use for remote eye drawers or tape. Okay, that's it for this time. Thank you for watching our E950 video. Give us a thumbs up if you've liked this, this encourages us to carry on going. If you want other videos in my series, look for youtube.com slash user slash Nigel A.R. Griffiths. Don't forget that other fast facts if you want to know some of the facts and features of this lovely machine.